Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, welcome to my studio, Diane here. Um, today we're going to, I'm going to paint um, some baby birds on some branches with holly and berries and something seasonal like that. But first of all, because, you know, it's always a good idea to do a bit of a warm up first. First of all, I'm going to do some uh, colour experiments with my Kuretake set of watercolours here, which I still am not completely familiar with. So it's always a good idea to kind of, every opportunity you get to explore it is a good one. And I'm going to use a brush today, which I don't often use, but which I think might be quite fun. Um, this is an Isabe, it's called a Petit Gris, which means little grey. It's a size five. Um, you can buy these, they're called quill brushes. They're called quill brushes because um, the, uh, the, the hairs are held together um, with a piece of what used to be um, the quill part of a feather from a bird, like a swan or a goose or something, uh, onto the shaft of the brush. Nowadays, it's just plastic. I think that's plastic with wire. So it's a traditional way of making a brush that goes back a very long time. And you can still get them. They make them here in Brittany, in France. But of course, they make them all over the world now in China and everything. And these are very similar to the Chinese style that they still use. So, um, yeah, so that's quite interesting, I think, to try this brush from time to time. They come in all sorts of different sizes. And... Um, range from tiny weeny ones like that. That's not even wet, so that's, that's like that. And you can paint quite finely with that one. Um, and through this me medium size one here, this is a, a, a medium size one. I don't think that's an Isabel, just a lookalike. And then there's this great big fat one here, which is lovely for doing big washes. And this is one good reason for using cheap paint because that will hold like half a teacup full of water and paint. And if you're uh, using very precious, you know, Daniel Smith or uh, Windsor and Newton or something like that, you might not want to splash around like that with a big brush like that. But if you're using good old Kuretake, here comes the rain. Uh, yeah, you know, why not just sling it on the paper and see what happens? And that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm just wetting my brush. I've got nice big um, jars of water. I've got two of those, one dirty and one clean. They both started off clean, of course. Um, and then when I rinse out, I'll rinse first in the, in the dirtier water and then in the clean to pick up nice clean water, unless I want to carry one color forward into the next. So what I've been doing a little bit with these paints is just sort of starting at one end of a row and um, going to the other end and the blues actually the blues start here this is a kind of baby blue and then there's a turquoise and uh, I'm not sure what that one is I've got a, a guide somewhere to what's what's what that is a turquoise no it's not that's what is that well we'll find out in a minute won't we so let's get started and all I'm going to do is uh, just paint circles with this brush I'm using a piece of unknown watercolour paper and see how richly that goes on. That's just two squirrels of the brush and you've got a beautiful, huge, big circle. So I rinse out my brush, go to the next colour. And this is a great exercise for brush control, water control, and just to loosen you up when you start painting in the morning. And what I'm going to do is let them overlap. Now that one's obviously not quite so intense. So I'm going to, I'm going to skip that one and go to the next one because I want more powerful color. Yep, there we are. And let's try this one. So now I know that number three on that row is pretty weak. That's kind of ultramarine. 
So the ultramarine in this box is not as powerful as this colour. Okay, I have to ask you to excuse the sound of the rain in the background. It's suddenly decided to pour. Um, and But in the meantime, I have found my colour chart, which is useful. So I have now got cadmium yellow here, and I'm going to pop in some cadmium yellow in the middle here and see that run. Don't want to do too many brush strokes because, you know, it would spoil it. So let's put some red here. Full twist of the brush like that. It's quite interesting, isn't it? And maybe a darker red down here. And maybe some more red over here. This is the same one. This is um, per purple. Well, that's interesting. You take no notice of the names, just pick them out at random. Okay, and uh, I think we need some more yellow in the middle here. So let's try this one. This is lemon yellow. See them run. And maybe I'll go for, oh, it stopped raining. <laughs> go for some greens now, perhaps. Put green up here. Doesn't matter if it goes off the paper. And the great thing about doing this is that you're not aiming to do anything particular. You're just practicing warming up, stopping those hands from hesitating quite so badly. This one I think is indigo. Lovely and dark. And um, if we put it down here, we'll get some green where it runs into the yellow, probably. And I'm thinking I might want to put a bit more dark hook blue in here. Just let that one too. I'll try my brush. And then we've got these lovely, um, what do you call them? Pastel colours. Oh, I have to get rid of all the, the green from that. That's no good. It's pastel pink. And it's interesting to observe what happens when one colour goes over another one. And then this is going to be a sort of pastel -y blue. And maybe a bit more green. Down here, perhaps. And then the great thing about this is that when it's done, you can just embellish it when it's dry, come over the top of it and do lots of things with gold and white pens and so on and so forth. And I'm just gonna try and get some, some nice orange, I think what we want. The bottom there is some orange. some orange. In the corner. And up here. And then I've got too much blurry blur blur going on in the middle there, so we're going to get some cadmium yellow. And dry off the brush a bit so that it's nice and thick. Cadmium yellow is somewhat opaque. And 
And then we need some more indigo, which was, or blue-gray deep, maybe this one. To make this one a bit darker. And then maybe some baby blue on here because that's opaque as well so that will give it a bit more body. Right then, so I feel thoroughly warmed up now. I'm going to put that aside, let it dry and then in a moment of idleness, perhaps tonight when I haven't got anything better to do, I will go in and embellish it just for the fun of it. So you can go over there and rest for a bit. Goodbye. We're not going to talk about success or failure because it's just paint. And now I'm going to have a think about some, something completely different, which is what, I, what you saw in the thumbnail. Just cleaning off my board here a little bit. I'm being very good today. I'm, I've cleaned the coffee pot, I've vacuumed the kitchen thought about washing the floor, washing the mats in the bathroom. I've been very housewifely today. I don't know what's come over me. Um, right, so let's do the next thing. This is a piece of Etcher watercolour paper. I think that'll do what I'm going to do now. Let's use a number five micron, Pigma micron watercolour, not watercolour. Um, archive, it says archival ink, micro pigment ink for waterproof and fade proof lines. So this shouldn't run when we paint over the top of it. That's the idea. Shouldn't run. Now I'm going to put some baby birds on a piece of paper and I'm going to put them on branches of holly. The question is always in my mind whether to put the, so I've done a little sketch, something like this, it's another painting, I'm going to do that next. Um, done this little sketch, got one, two, three birds there. And on the one I want to do, I'm going to do four. And the question is whether to put the branches in first and then put the birds on, or do the birds first and then put the branches in. It's always difficult to know which way to go. And I still don't know. So. Oh well, let's go for it. Let's put a bird in the middle. So we're basically doing a circle with two little wings and a little floofy tail. And then because he's a baby bird, he has his little eyes here and his little beak there. And he's going to have his tail is here. Yes, don't give him two tails down. And that's it really. And then he's going to have two little feet as you do. And I'm not gonna put any more detail on there. Just leave it like that. And he needs a branch. So let's grow him a branch. Oh, thank you, he says. I've got something to stand on now. Could we have a little twig coming up this way, perhaps? I'd like a bit of holly, he says. Quite like another bit. Okay, that's good. Can I have a friend, please? Okay, let's take this branch up here and we're going to have a little twig coming out to the side there. Obviously we need more holly and more berries. We put up a short yesterday, Tamsin does these shorts and she called it Watch Holly, Enjoy Holly Playing in her shorts or something like that. Got a lot of views, don't know why. So we're going to put a ball 
on the tree there. A little ball like that. Maybe we'll put two. There we are. And um, so we'll just grow some more leaves here. We've had the most fabulous holly this year in our garden. We've never seen anything like it before. The amount of leaves, uh, not leaves, berries, look at that. I've never seen holly like this before, with all this number of leaves. That's more normal. And that's what we've had this year on some of the twigs. I don't know if it's because we had such a long, hot, dry summer. I'm not quite sure why that would have happened, but it did. Um, okay, so that's right. So we've got berries here. It's beautiful. And the birds are going to be really happy because there's so many berries for them to eat. Right, so now we're going to put another baby bird up here. And uh, give him a floofy tail out here. And his little beak is there, and his eyes. And his little feet. And a wing. I don't know if you've visited our um, new website yet, but uh, if you pop over there, you can get all these sketches for free, as you probably know. Okay, so this is going over here now. This piece of holly is growing. And uh, we'll have another ball hanging here. Another twig coming down here. More holly. Always the necessary berries. And then one more little birdie. I don't know if these are robins or what they are. But he's over here. Nice round body. Goofy tail, little beak, little eye, little wing, little feet. So all baby birds. And his holly is underneath him here. And the painting part of this is going to be probably the quickest part of the whole thing. One, two, three, four, five balls. We could put more balls if we wanted to, but I think that's probably enough for the minute. So now we're going to paint it and I'll be using a reasonably small brush. Um, I would say probably, no, not that one. Is that the same? No, that's, what's that? That's a seven, that's a seven. Where's it gone, that one, one that's down on that five, is it? Yeah, a five. A size five round probably big enough. It's going to be a very sketchy little painting. Sketchy in the sense of uh, like a sketch, yeah? Not sketchy in the sense of not very good. Not, well, it might not be very good. It's hard to say, really. I need a piece of paper to test on. Test, right. Okay, that's pink. I'm going to put little pink hints on the chests, and you can decide whether they're robins that have been in the wash, for example, or whether they're chickadees or uh, unripe cardinals. Three birds, there we are, and the um, and the grey 
this this set's nice because it has this lovely soft grey that you can just wash out like that. And then we can just put in a little grey head. This is going to be a delicate painting. I wanted to do delicate baby birds. And I've added a little bit of violet to the grey there. It's a very, very good opportunity to not go inside the lines. Don't, don't keep inside the lines. You know, keep, keep it, make it easy for yourself. There we are. That's those. And just need a quick slurp. Do you like my mug? This is one of our custom mugs. It's got one of my paintings on the side. It's a bit big for me, but uh, I know, well, a lot of people like big mugs. Okay, so let us find some green. What green shall we use? Shall we use a nice uh, holly green with a little bit of gray in it, just to make it a little bit less pungent? And uh, don't forget to, you know, mix and match, don't, uh, don't keep it all the same all the way through. Don't stand inside the lines. Keep away from the edge. We want it to be lively, don't we? All sorts of different kinds of greens. There is a million greens to choose from in the world. Some people say they don't like green, but how can that be? And there are so many different ones. And then the holly berries, I think. I would say this is probably the nearest color. Yeah, so we'll just pop in the berries. When you're done, if you want to add a few more to give a bit more of a, you know, sharpen it up a bit. Sometimes you have really orange berries actually on holly, sort of this kind of colour. I don't know why they vary, but this year they're very dark red. It's like the apple crop here this year has been amazing. The best apples I've ever seen, huge in the shops and also on the trees around and about, quite amazing. It's just what the weather does when it goes bonkers. So um, now uh, this piece of paper is too full of colour, so I'll get rid of that and use this. I'm going to paint the baubles red, I think. You can do them whatever colour you want. Possibly red is a bit more festive. And then the only thing we need to do now is to paint the branches, which I'm going to do in a soft brown. So that's burnt sienna mixed with this gray. You see how I'm using the tester sheet as a palette, I can actually pick paint up from there. After I've tested it out, I don't have to waste it. I can go into that, pick it up off the piece of paper because I'm only using a tiny amount of paint for these branches. And we're keeping them really loose. I think we need some more holly leaves up there. I think I have a look at it in a second when I finished. 
painting that. Um, I think we probably want a little bit more uh, grey on the birds. Just bring it up a little bit. I just thought it would be nice to do birds in grey rather than brown. It's always, you know, little brown jobbies. Um, just grab my pen again. I'm going to put a couple more bits of holly up here. And a few more berries, perhaps. Okay, and if they're dry, why wouldn't we come in with some gold? Mm, not sure about gold, it doesn't show up enough. Let's do white. Just a little bit of embellishment there. Then, if you're not completely convinced about your leaves, maybe you want to just darken some parts. So, for example, the centers where the dark part is. So you can either do them really, really simply, sketchy, nothing exciting. You could paint them in detail if you want, but it's just the idea. And there we are, basically. There we are, one little sketch of some birds on a tree with some holly and some baubles. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give us a like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you over at dianeanton.com on our website where you have everything your heart desires. So I'll see you again soon. Bye for now, everybody. Bye bye.